Hello everyone, welcome back to Psychology of the Unknown. I'm author S.M. Cornthwaite, and today I'm going to be talking to you about antisocial deviancy among juveniles who become multiple murderers. The reason this topic is important is to understand some of the signs which can be exhibited by a potential future multiple murderer and what these practitioners of antisocial deviancy have in common. It also allows us an inside glimpse into the psyche of these individuals and what causes their behavior. Yeah, we don't want to do anything to scare your children. That's the last thing we want to do. We don't want to scare anybody. When we study antisocial deviancy and multiple murderers, a number of theories arise, such as stage theory, which was pioneered by Jane Lovinger and James Fowler, which was developed as a result of Piaget's theory of cognitive development, as well as social constructionism, which has its roots in concepts developed by Michael de Montaigne, Frederick Neitzke, and Walter Lippmann, and brought to the U.S. by Peter L. Berger and Thomas Luckman in their 1966 book, The Social Construction of Reality. Strain theory, which was developed by Merton and Agnew, and Gottfried's general theory of crime. Today we'll be combining each of these theories and discussing what the majority of murderers have in common. Research has found a number of traits that serial killers and spree killers share during childhood and adolescence, as well as traits they have in common in adulthood, which provide the basis for what we'll be discussing here today and combine all the aforementioned theories. Before we get into it, however, we need to define the difference between serial murder, serial killers, spree killers, and mass murderers. Often the general public and mass media will use these terms interchangeably. However, there is a difference between them that we should understand. The Federal Bureau of Investigation defines serial murder as the unlawful killing of two or more victims by the same offender in separate events. The United States Congress and the Crime Classification Manual 3rd Edition define a serial killing as a pattern of three or more murders, not less than one of which was committed within the United States, having common characteristics such as to suggest the reasonable possibility that the crimes were committed by the same actor or actors. More often than not, serial killings have a sexual aspect to the crime, even if it isn't immediately known. Spree murder, however, is the killing of two or more victims in a single extended criminal event at two or more locations over an uninterrupted period of time. Typically, the killings serve a common purpose such as sensationalism, evading capture, and or suicide by cop. Mass murder is the unlawful killing of four or more victims by the same offender acting in concert at one location in a single continuous event that may last minutes, hours, or even days. Mass murderers usually commit their crimes due to a psychological break. In the case of some, such as a mass murder team, there is a dominant personality and a submissive personality. The dominant personality is the one who is effectively in charge, while the submissive personality is a follower and may not even fully understand why they are committing the murder in the first place, such as with the DC snipers. Because of the psychological break that most mass murderers experience, there really aren't any common traits in adolescence or juvenile delinquency to speak of. In adulthood, however, these types of murderers generally experience extreme stress and even mental health problems until one day they simply snap. Serial killers and spree killers, however, share what many researchers refer to as the McDonald Triad during adolescence. This triad of behaviors was discovered by psychiatrist J.M. McDonald in 1963. What he found was that a high percentage of serial killers and spree killers exhibit behaviors of cruelty to animals, obsessive fire starting, and persistent bedwetting in their youth. According to Burgess, Douglas, and Resler, 1992, 36% of the 36 incarcerated sexual murderers studied reported cruelty to animals during childhood and 46 in adolescence. In the same study, they found that 56% admitted to fire setting in childhood and 52% in adolescence. Sleep problems such as bedwetting were also experienced by 48% in childhood and 50% in adolescence. Aside from the McDonald triad, research has also discovered what is known as a dark triad among killers. The dark triad is a group of behaviors which usually develop in childhood and adolescence, but don't fully manifest until after the age of 25. These are narcissism, Machiavellianism, and psychopathy. Narcissism, otherwise known as narcissistic personality disorder in the DSM-5, is a pattern of grandiosity, need for admiration, and lack of empathy. 
Those with this trait have a deep-seated need to feel superior to everyone else. Killers with this disorder genuinely feel that they are going to outsmart investigators and get away with their crimes. Narcissism, much like other personality disorders, develop in childhood and adolescence. Likely due to a lack of attachment, parental or peer rejection, devaluation, and parental inconsistencies. This can lead a juvenile and later adult to develop a grandiose need to be praised and admired. A 1997 report by E.W. Hickey, which studied 62 male serial killers, found that 48% had been rejected as children by a parent or other important figure in their life. Machiavellianism is a pattern of behavior in which the individual is callous, manipulative, and morally indifferent. In a study by Chabrol et al. 2009, of 615 French students, 70% reported at least one of these deviant behaviors in the past year. Males in the study reported more Machiavellian traits than females. What researchers also found was that Machiavellian traits are actually desirable among teenagers. The Machiavellian traits exhibited by the subjects did not actually appear to independently contribute to juvenile delinquency. And in females, the traits actually reduced the risks of juvenile delinquency. Further, those who are regularly cycled between foster homes or other caregivers between birth and age 11 tend to develop an attachment disorder, which can lead them to exhibit Machiavellian traits and personalities. The third aspect of the dark triad is psychopathy. It should be noted that there is actually no such diagnosis as psychopathy or sociopathy. Instead, the DSM-5 actually describes these traits as antisocial personality disorder. APD is a pattern of disregard for and violation of the rights of others. Most researchers have found that the disorder cannot be attributed to any one cause, but rather a series of interpersonal relationships that had negative outcomes, genetics, and possibly neurological trauma. A twin study performed by Eisnick and Eisnick in 1978 found that 55% of the identical twins shared similar criminal histories, while only 13% of fraternal twins did. Other than the McDonald and Dark Triads, research has found that family history has also contributed to the creation and development of murderers. Burgess, Douglas, and Resler found in their study of 36 murderers that 70% had a familial history of alcohol abuse and one-third had a history of drug abuse. The same study found that 50% of the murderers came from families with psychiatric disorders, with 25% having mental health problems in early childhood. What's more, they also found that 50% of the convicted murderers had family members with criminal histories. Included in this study, research found that 42% of murderers came from abusive households. 46% experienced family sexual problems, with 68% having residential instability. 72% had a negative relationship with a male caregiver, and 66% had mothers who were the dominant parent. 74% reported psychological abuse and 53% perceived that they were treated unfairly by their family. Childhood sexual experiences were also an important part of the study. 79% of the murderers experienced autoerotic practices during their youth. 71% experienced voyeuristic behaviors and 81% were exposed to pornography before adulthood. 73% experienced sexually stressful events such as rape and molestation. 53.8% of those who were sexually abused came from intact families, and 58.3% had warm relationships with their mothers. 91.7% had hostile, cold, or distant relationships with their fathers, and 72.7% reported that their mother was the dominant parent in the household. In their book, Sexual Homicides, Patterns and Motives, Burgess, Douglas, and Resler found that 74% of murderers came from families with stable income, and only 47% indicated that their fathers left their family before the individual turned 12. In fact, 57% indicated that both parents were initially present in their lives, but other factors have been found to contribute to murder as well. In a study of 239 convicted murderers, 21.34% had some kind of head injury, and 55% experienced psychosocial stressors. In a study of mass murderers, 42.4% experienced trauma of some kind, with 34.3% being victims of abuse, 17.4% were victims of bullying, and 2.9% had a parent who committed suicide. While lack of education may be one of the factors that contributes to some forms of delinquency, only 12.2% of mass murderers had less than a high school education. The majority of some who exhibit delinquent behavior may be classified as African American or Latino. Caucasians, however, account for 52.3% of mass murderers. 
with 92% of sexual murderers, i.e. serial killers, being Caucasian. Thank you everyone for tuning in. I hope it helped increase your understanding of how some children can grow up to be multiple murderers. I'm S.M. Cornthwaite. You can find my true crime book, Jack the Ripper, The Man Behind the Blade, my collection of short horror stories inspired by true events, Tales from Hell's Hollow, as well as my children's horror series, Hollow Screams Day of the Dolls and Hollow Screams Ghost House on Amazon today. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss a single video. Give us a like, leave a comment below, and please share the video with your family and friends. I've been Shannon, and this has been Psychology of the Unknown.